Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Duran. Welcome to Trending Vegas. We're talking about the major trending stories you're seeing on your social media channels. I'm joined by a portion of our city social media team, including Shane Savannah Pretty and Natasha Shahani. Hi. And our guest today, JJ Snyder from Channel 13's The Morning Blend. Thanks so much Hi. for being here. Thanks, Melissa. I'm so excited to be here. We've been trying to get JJ on for a while. Our schedules are always not syncing up, but we finally made it work. I know. You and I, we're, we're living busy <laughs> lives, but today's the day. I know. I'm so today's glad you're here. So I love your social media accounts because they're just so full of energy and smiles, and you should follow her online. She's really great. Talk to me a little Thank bit you. about that Thanks. personal business social media vibe you've got going yeah. on. Yeah, oh my gosh. Well, I have a lot of fun on social media, and um, I knew you were gonna ask me that. Yeah. So I was thinking about it this morning, <laughs> in the shower, actually. And uh, I got a great new shampoo and conditioner, by the way. I <laughs> share with everybody. Um, I did, for real. Um, but I, I have, um, I have a mission. I'm on a quest to keep social media positive for me. Yeah. And um, what that means is it's almost like a vice at times. Mm -hmm. Like it's like sugar or coffee for me. Like a little bit of it is really good and it can really give me a boost of, of energy. But then too much of it um, can really be negative. And I'm very sensitive right. to it becoming negative in my life. So it's actually a really good way of putting it. Thank you. I like you like that? that? I yeah. Kind of like just another th part of my day. But I, I do, I am determined to keep it uh, a positive experience. And that means from creating content that I think is creative and also through my interactions with people. And I'm, I'm pretty fortunate, I have to say, that I have kind of a core group of friends that maybe I have not, are you, you're giggling at my stuff. Um, <laughs> the video. Oh, how fun was this, the Neon Museum? Well, and then you got oh this my thing. Gosh. This place. Uh, oh, the um, happy place. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, if you haven't been to the happy place, you must go. Jason Denant, who was a guest here on the show, yeah. he does social media for the station, and I went down and had an incredible experience there. So, so yeah, I'm just really determined to keep it positive. And I, I do, I see a lot of negativity on social media, and I have certain things that are kind of um, triggers for me, and I will unfollow people when I see certain things over and over. Well, that's healthy, whatever so, works for you. And I think yeah. everybody, for everybody it's different, mm -hmm. and you have to know what your triggers are. So that is true. Good. It is different for everybody. Absolutely, so. well, we're very glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. We have a lot of interesting topics to get to. Our first topic got national attention after video of Ellen DeGeneres, and former President George W. Bush were spotted sitting next to each other at a Dallas Cowboys game. Take a look. People were upset. They thought, why is a gay Hollywood liberal sitting next to a conservative Republican president? Didn't even notice I'm holding the brand new iPhone 11. And, um, <laughs> but a lot of people were mad, and they did what people do when they're mad. They tweet. And, uh, but here's one tweet that I loved. This uh, person says, Ellen and George Bush together makes me have faith in America again. And, um, exactly. Here's the thing, I'm friends with George Bush. In fact, I'm friends with a lot of people who don't share the same beliefs that I have. We're all different, and I think that we've forgotten that that's okay that we're all different. For instance, I wish people wouldn't wear fur. I don't like it, but, but I'm friends with people who wear fur. And I, I'm friends with people who are furry, as a matter of fact. I have <laughs> friends who should tweeze more. And I, I have, but just because I don't agree with someone on everything doesn't mean that I'm not gonna be friends with them. When I say be kind to one another, I don't mean only the people that think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. Doesn't matter. Um, Kristen Chenoweth, one of my favorites, replied, this is exactly the way I believe and I love you even more. And then we have this one from Dax Shepard, preach. But then I thought this was interesting. This is from Robert Cameron. People who are privileged and immune from harm need to stop telling people to grow up. And so I, coming back out to us, I really kind of feel like this was the back and forth I saw on social media a lot. A lot of people saying, yes, just be kind to each other, which is Ellen's message. But a lot of people saying, well, that's very easy for you to say because you have money, you have fame, and so it's easy to turn the other cheek. For you and I thought it was an interesting back and forth what did you see and notice on social well first of all I loved Ellen's response mm -hmm. because she addressed the whole situation mm -hmm. with a brilliant hilarious monologue right and I think that's what we all could use is a little bit of humor about the whole thing quite frankly and to be honest I don't even think it's about wealth and privilege although I understand how much wealth and privilege we're talking about being in a box at a Cowboys game I get that there's only a few people in the country who get asked to do right. that 
flat and, and they're at a, a level of money making that most of us never even see. However, I think it has to do more with being polite in public. You could be at a party with people with absolutely no money and you're brought together with a group of neighbors and you're going to be on your best behavior because that's what we were taught growing up right. is be kind to other people, be polite, put your best face forward. And if you have a problem with someone, you know, um, discuss that with them in the, in the right arena. But at a public event, I, I Right, what did yeah. they expect her, those who were against her, what were they expecting her to do? Turn her back against him? I don't yeah. understand what people were expecting yeah. her to do, Natasha. I mean, she was a Packers fan, like that whole monologue yeah. was. I am a Packers fan sitting in the cowboy owner's suite. So like, already you know, like she's kind of a little out of place and she's secretly cheering for her team in the midst of um, all of the cowboy fans, but I mean, it is true, you know, not a lot of people get that experience, but you're not gonna go sit down, no matter what you feel about his presidency, that is not the arena to have it. And I did see a couple articles that talked about privilege because it was the same week, or very closely to the hug of the police officer who shot the man yes. right. thinking it was her was apartment in the right? courtroom. And, and in the courtroom. Yes. And so they were almost comparing the two and tying it back to privilege. And that's one of those things, like, that's a trigger for me. Like, let's not, you know, yes, privilege might be a discussion to have, but this is a world yeah. that needs kindness. So can we concentrate on the positive messages instead of making it something that it might not be? Right. And Shane, I know you have a lot to say on this. <laughs> You've been biting your lips. I've been watching you. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, this is a, a very polarized time, and you know, her tweet got 517,000 likes. Mark Ruffalo's, you know, response to her against, you know, that whole situation got 407,000 likes. So, you know, we're pretty evenly divided on this on this topic. I'm all for civility, but uh, I think the the issue that um, the other side is is trying to have is that. Look, do you have a responsibility if you've got a racist friend to call them out on it? You know, because they they're not going to listen to you know they're not going to listen to people outside their circle. Basically, uh, Ellen didn't just happen to be in the box with Bush. You know, she said they're friends, so she has this opportunity to to be the voice of the other side because he did you know sponsor um, you know these he he wanted the constitutional amendment against gay marriage. He wanted uh, you know, these, these things that directly affect uh, her community and, and, you know, she's kind of an icon for LGBTQ rights. So you have that opportunity and are you using it because she's great at deflection with her humor and stuff like that. She made fun of the situation and, um, and I think people aren't against civility. They aren't against being nice to people with different viewpoints. I just think that they are seeing her missed opportunity now that you're a voice, now that you have this responsibility in this platform are you using it for good to help change? But the how life? do they know that she's not right. using it for good? What were you going to say? Jennifer? No, I just it 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 um, it goes way beyond uh, just acting civil. I think there are a lot of people who responded uh, uh, on Twitter who would have been thrilled if she would have stood up and throw a drink on him. <laughs> that's Honestly, true. And that's 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 just the society we're living in, where um, just because you believe something, it gives you permission to act out. And um, it's almost like there, there's a crowd that's craving that behavior. And I just, don't, I just don't support it. It's ridiculous. Not only that, but one man is not responsible, even the president of the United mm -hmm. States, and we have quite an interesting president right now. That one man, Bush, is not responsible entirely for all those policies. It's him. It's his cabinet. It's his administration. You know, and I mean, America, we've always differed about things. We have to have, you know, we have to have civility, like above all. I think really. it, I think it brings up the fact that we just have to be open to talking mm -hmm. with each other and not turning our backs on each other, not expecting us to just split ways unless you walk your way, I'll walk mine. We have to keep those doors open, to keep talking, to keep that dialogue moving along if we want to make progress in any situation. So I think it does start with Ellen saying, listen, we may differ, but we're going to be kind and I'm going to be kind and that's what I'm all about. So and very interesting. Can topic. we just touch back because you just made me think on something like even if Ellen is a representative of the gay community and certainly she is um, for sure. Uh, 
isn't it probably better strategy for her to be um, to be to be on a speaking relationship with somebody who has opposite views as opposed to creating a scene or creating a, a yeah. wedge? I think that's the thing is people are, are, are like valuing showing their hatred for each other. And that historically hasn't proven t to be a good, you know, policy towards healing, right, right? Right. I think that, I mean, it just shows the kind of times we're living in where everyone wants that anger, everyone has that anger, they want everyone to display it, and that's just, in our opinions, not the right way maybe to display. Maybe we all so. need to just go to yoga. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe we all need to just take also, a deep breath. Also in the history of, of gaining <laughs> rights. Yes. You know, especially with African Americans, you know, the civil rights movement wasn't just about being nice. So there's absolutely there's the idea that you you know you have to tap into that passion, that anger at some at some level. It's not just about being passive and accepting. So I think that's And Ellen hasn't been. She has been an avid spokesperson. She was she literally almost lost her career when she came out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like um, she she hasn't been. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, very very good points. I knew this was going to be a good topic to talk about. <laughs> All right, guys, next topic is one that got some attention on social media. Just a little bit of attention, but I really think it's going to be seeing a lot more momentum after a local mom started a petition to increase lunchtime at local schools. Currently, many schools only have 20 minutes to let their kids eat. So far, more than 5,000 people have signed this petition. Here are some of the things on social media that we're seeing. This is the RJ story. District regulations specify that schools designate at least 20 minutes for lunch. How schools structure lunch and recess beyond that is largely up to them. And then we just have more of county commissioners, Clark County School District and State of Nevada Educational Board, one hour lunch recess. They're pushing for an entire hour. I can't agree with this more, especially for kindergarten, 25 to 30 minutes. Have you tried getting a five or six year old <laughs> to sit and eat within 20 minutes? Good luck. And then this one. I totally agree, especially elementary kids need more time for lunch. So I thought this was interesting because maybe because I have a five year old at home and he has come home with half eaten lunches and my child eats. He eats everything in front of him. And when I say, what is going on? He said, there's just no time, mama. I don't have time to eat. They only give us like 20 minutes is how he says. <laughs> and so I, I thought this was interesting. Wow. Lunchtime for me was the best time of the day. That's when you flirt. That's <laughs> when you find out who likes you. It's when you go outside and play. I feel like schools are in a no-win situation. I've volunteered at my son's school and them trying to rotate the kids out of the cafeteria with as many kids as they mm -hmm. have, it's a daunting task. And I would doubt that mm -hmm. parents would be okay with increasing the school day. So I don't know, I feel mm -hmm. like it's a no-win situation, but I personally would like to see giving, I would like my son's lunchbox to be empty when he comes home. <laughs> Shane, let me start with you. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, 20 minutes is the minimum set by the state uh, agricultural department. so. I think that they could. I think that they could probably do more because 20 minutes is not a lot of time. If that was entirely the time that they had to eat, fine. But they have also got to get into their chairs. If you stand if you're buying lunch, lunch you got to yeah. stand in stand line. line. If you got to go to the restroom, I mean, all these things take away minutes. And kids are not the most focused, especially at that age. So, I mean, 20 <laughs> minutes goes by really fast. Yeah, JJ. Yeah, I think it's interesting because. When I hear you talking, I think about overcrowding and how much maybe that factors into this. Yeah. Um, so I actually spoke with the mother who started this petition, um, and she told me that you know her daughter keeps coming home with a full lunch, mm -hmm. um, and it's just absolutely unhealthy, and it's totally counterproductive to learning if kids don't have proper nourishment during the day. I remember being starving. Do you guys remember being like sixth, seventh grade, and you were oh. growing, and I was absolutely starving. You were hangry. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. I was. Not to mention, um, a lot of things do get learned at lunch and at recess. You're, you work, you're, you're learning a lot of things even, even on the social level. Now, adding time to the school day, of course, that's probably out of the question. It, I, I think it's really good to shine light on this problem. Is there any way to find more efficiency in the school day so that kids could have a little more time? And I know right. with the kids getting hot lunch, it's an mm -hmm. even bigger problem yeah. because out of that 20 minutes, part of that time is standing in line mm -hmm. for lunch. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. I will just also say I had peanut butter and jelly pretty much every day. <laughs> 
of my life in grade school. So that's when I think back to lunch. Yeah, I had bologna, and to this day I can't you really. Did. Yeah, I mean I love bologna, but there was yeah. a time in my life where I was like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Natasha, what are your thoughts? What are you seeing on social? I mean, I don't have children, but I remember being in school, and we had like 15 minutes for recess, and then like a few hours later, you would get 30-ish minutes for lunch, and you know that was like a good balance. But yeah. as an adult now, like. I need my 30 minute lunchtime. I have to get out of the office. I have to t refresh my day. I have to eat, you know? And Shane can attest to this. Like, when I don't get out of the office or like we don't eat, like, yeah, we, it, we are a very we grumpy too. group of people upstairs, mm, yeah. you know? Like, in our little cubicle, we all share. So you get a lot more of like the hangriness comes out of me. I think you're just gonna yeah. have a more of increased learning if you give kids the time to just let it out, let their energy out, let their emotions out during lunch, and they can regroup, refocus, yeah. and move forward. Forward. So I think we're probably going to be talking about this in the future, see where this goes. I know that some school districts were actually, some districts were having meetings with parents about what they would like to see. So it'll be interesting mm. to see where it goes. All right, guys, next we're going to be talking about another festival headed to town. This one right out of City Las Vegas city limits. But the acts coming in, they're huge names. Intersect will be taking place at the Las Vegas Festival Grounds on December 6th and December 7th. Here's a look at their lineup. It's kind of hard to read, but... I mean, Casey Musgraves, Foo Fighters, and then this is their trailer. So it's gonna be a little bit of everything, right? Some te digital technology mixed in with some good music. Natasha, you actually know the full story behind this. This started out as part of the Amazon Web Services their conference, right? They right. would put on these this conference for, um, I guess, the, their attendees. Right. But they decided to expand that. Yep. Jeez. So this conference has been happening in Las Vegas since 2012, and we know how conferences and conventions go around here. People bring in huge names for their after parties. So this was technically like their after party that for the first time they are opening to the public. So they're <sighs> selling tickets, they're turning it into a whole two-day event, they're incorporating some like exhibitions and like art things into it and trying to make it a big festival in Las Vegas. This is the second new festival in the next two months that is happening on those grounds. And I mean, we're just expanding. So it's cool to see Las Vegas become like a hub for such cool music festivals and a lot of first time music festivals, you know. Life is Beautiful started in downtown. Day in Vegas is coming in November and then intersect in December. So we're just popping. I think it's just so exciting to, to know, not to put a damper on it, but you know, one October could be a scary remembrance of everyone with an outsourced festival. But the fact mm. that everyone still feels the power and the love to come together to have these festivals, I think is amazing. And I do love the fact that this is happening. It seems like all the cool stuff is really happening in city of Las Vegas limits or mm -hmm. just right outside like these festival yeah. grounds. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's a good opportunity for the city of Las Vegas to bring people in downtown and show them all the amazing things we're actually doing downtown. JJ, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's super exciting. It's incredible to see another music festival mm -hmm. coming. I'm like, oh my gosh, are we becoming you know, the center of the country for music festivals, and we are, and it makes a lot of sense, you know, just like sports coming to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. We are, we really, truly are still the best hosts in the country. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you've traveled to Absolutely. another city yeah. and yeah. had, uh, you know, like a tourist experience, you, you realize, wow, we really do know how to do this. We're spoiled here. We and spoiled. we're organized. Absolutely. And the yeah. weather for an outdoor festival in amazing. December. Now, this is really so amazing, though. Yeah. Guys, before we go, we're going to make this quickly. I just want to talk about um, Fremont Street East Canopy opened up. They have a new canopy. Here's some video from it. Pretty amazing. I mean, how realistic does that look? This is getting a lot of social media attention because people want to flock to Fremont Street Experience to mm -hmm. see this. It's and a I huge think upgrade. It's a huge upgrade. 12.5 million new LED lights. Are they completely done with it? Do you know um, is it, it completely? It should be completely done by New Year's Eve. Yeah, that is the December. big reveal. Wow, so this isn't mm. even completely done. No. Do you think people will go come down to downtown to see it? JJ? I mean, people go downtown anyway, and I just love how offbeat the whole downtown experience is. But it, 
I will get used to it. It's mm -hmm. definitely impressive. And I will just say, I go down to Fremont for the food and the people watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you cannot beat it. No, it's the best in town. Right. All right. JJ, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. It was great having you. Thanks for you. having me. Thanks All right, guys. guys. Well, the holidays are quickly approaching. Do you have your travel plans ready to go? When we come back, we're going to have some tips to help you make the holidays a little easier to maneuver. We'll be right back. They said a bottle was just a bottle. that no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Welcome back everyone. Whether you're flying across the country or taking a quick road trip, the holidays always pose some travel challenges, but we're going to help you maneuver all of that. I'm joined by Sergio Avila from AAA Nevada who has a breakdown of the do's and the don'ts for travel. Thank you so much for being here. Hey Melissa, thanks for having me. So, okay, booking flights, we probably should have done that already a month ago, <laughs> but there are a few tips. I, I think people are curious about gas prices, road conditions. When is the best time to travel? Let's start there. Thanksgiving yeah. and then Christmas. Okay, so yeah, you know, Thanksgiving, if you're expected to take a, a road trip, uh, last year, I'll, I'll give you the numbers, uh, AAA forecast, 54 million Americans were gonna be traveling for Thanksgiving. The majority of those folks were gonna be driving. So, I mean, if you're planning to take that road trip, uh, the best thing you can be doing right now is uh, making sure your vehicle's ready for something like that. You right. know, whether it's just a short, quick trip, or maybe you're traveling a little farther, uh, October is actually car care month. Okay. Uh, so it's, uh, it's important to be making sure your vehicle's okay. In, La in Las Vegas, we like to say, make the safe bet, right? Uh, right. Check your battery, your engine, and your tires. I mean, those are three important things that, that if you're on the road, something goes wrong, you're gonna get stuck. So that's what you wanna be doing, just ensuring that your vehicle's uh, ready for that long drive. You know, I feel like because we live in such a nice weather area, a lot of people maybe take it for granted, especially in the winter months, because they think, oh, the weather's perfect. I mean, what am I possibly going to run out there in the road conditions? It's going to be fine. Do you see that happening a lot? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We, we take that nice weather for granted, but you have to realize that our summers here are harsh and they're harsh on our vehicles. So we've just gone through that harsh summer. Mm -hmm. Your vehicle may have been worn down. Your tires may be a little worn down, you know? And, and so even going into the winter months, it's something that you should be taking care of, especially uh, if you're planning a long drive. And I have to say, driving through the Cajon Pass during winter, it's scary. So I would say, have your tires checked, have everything checked, right? Yeah, I think we have, we all have horror <laughs> stories of the Cajon Pass, especially living here in Las Vegas, oh you know. Oh my gosh. Oh, there was an accident. I had to be there for X Six amount of hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the, the best thing you can do is just prepare and then that way you don't have to call AAA to help you out. So when is the best time to travel for Thanksgiving? I mean, are we looking at the Tuesday before, the Wednesday before? What are your thoughts? The best, uh, if you're looking for a flight, uh, the best time to fly out is uh, the Monday before Thanksgiving. Oh. That's when you'll find uh, the, the least expensive okay. uh, flights available uh, okay. just because you know you're a couple days away from the holiday. The, the busiest days are going to be that Tuesday and Wednesday even if you are driving or you're flying. Th those days tend to be the, the busiest just because oh, yeah. that's when people have the time off, that's when they're going to be heading out. So maybe save those vacation days a little bit, <laughs> tack a little extra one on to that travel week. What about coming back? Yeah, I mean, same thing, you know, it's right? be Sunday. the same it's the that Sunday right after. I mean, I've done it. I've driven to the California area uh, from Las Vegas and, and coming back on Sunday. It's a nightmare. So if you are planning to come back on Sunday, one thing I like to do is just leave a little earlier than yeah. you would just to get a head start on that traffic uh, that's coming back this way. What about Christmas? You know, Christmas people tend to have two weeks off or the kids are off for two weeks. People take more time around Christmas. So when is the best time to travel during Christmas? Yeah, the busiest day uh, when it comes to Christmas this is actually December 22nd, so it was a few days before. Okay. So uh, if you if you do it, if you travel, maybe the 21st uh, or even Christmas Eve is actually the the least traveled. Right, day. it's a great uh, day to be because, at the airport. Yeah, because it, it, things are lonely. You know, people are typically already at their destination. Uh, right. So people if are you at can, the bar drinking yeah, exactly. If, if you if you want to hold out that long. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, you know, to each his own. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, if uh, if you want to hold out that long, most families don't. Uh, the 22nd is usually when we tell people is the busiest. So if you want to kind of plan around that, uh, that'd be a good way to do it. Well, now what about New Year's Eve in Las Vegas? Because that poses a whole different problem with people coming in from neighboring states to celebrate. So if you are a Las Vegan, does you going out, does that matter as much? Or do you guys have any traffic studies yeah, on that? You know, I mean, uh, we're kind of spoiled because of that here, right? When there are these big holidays like Memorial Day, Labor right. Day, New Year's Eve. Uh, I mean, I I've been to the airport personally on some of those holidays leaving, and, you know, it's fine. They're, they're, okay. More people are coming in than are leaving, you know? So, right, so uh, we're good in that yeah, aspect. Yeah, so we're kind of doing the opposite when we live in Nevada. You know, we head out when people are coming into the town. So my last question for you, all those procrastinators out there, I know there are a lot of you who are sitting at home going, I have not booked my flight yet. <laughs> Is there going to be any opportunity between now and say Thanksgiving or, or Christmas for any more deals or are you out of luck? You know, it's funny that you say that because the cheapest tickets available are going to be those last minute ones. What? So seven to 13 days, uh, before each holiday, that's when you're gonna get the best deal, right? That's when they're the least expensive, but- Wait, how? There, there's a catch, right? There's okay. a catch. The, 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 the fact is that- You're gonna have to make eight stops? Well, no, there's not a lot of tickets left, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's the, true. So the flight that you're looking for may be sold out if you're traveling with a family that's completely ill-advised. You okay. know, if you're traveling by yourself, you might be able to pull that off. Yeah. Uh, but really, I mean, there's just not a lot of options left at that point. That is when you'll get the best deal you would have to be extremely flexible. And like I said, if you're traveling with a large party, like with a family yeah. or something like that, it'd be pretty difficult to get tickets. Where can people go for all this information, Sergio? Yeah, you know, obviously check AAA.com. You know, one thing that we that we like to tell people is that AAA members actually get uh, free travel agent services. Oh. And so it's not a lot that you hear like, ah, no one wants to go to a travel agent, but they're the ones that have done all the research. They know all the stuff. So if you have a AAA member at home and you haven't booked, might be a good time to give uh, give them a call, you know, and see what they can do. They can probably find you a good deal. Do the headache stuff for you. Yeah, they can just do all of it for you, and then you just say, okay, here's my money, take it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Sergio. Thanks so much. Great Not tips. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, when we come back, look at some of the viral videos catching your attention. We'll be right back. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Okay, guys, we only have time for one video today. This is my pick, and we picked it because it's the beginning of basketball season as we tape this today. So here's my favorite video. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He on X Games. <laughs> that is the best video. That's just so, I love it. Is that a grandpa, you think? Look at him. I just love this video in honor of basketball season. There's no better feeling in the world than faking out someone on the court. Am I right or am I right? It's not about being younger and faster. You just got to be smarter. Yeah, 100%. That is my motto, you guys. Yeah. Work smarter, smart. not, not harder. harder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you at home for watching. Remember, you can get in on the conversation. Just follow us at City of Las Vegas and use the hashtag TrendingVegas. You can also find us on YouTube, Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time.